everyone it's Karen here I'm so excited to be back on the Prima design team and also doing videos for Prima on their YouTube channel so I just wanted to show you what I'm going to be working with today I love the flirty fleur collection the colors are exactly the colors that I love and I'm going to show you all the papers before I create my layout and I'm going to show you some of the embellishments that are matching for this collection I'm just going to put these aside for a second so I could show you the papers. I do have to turn this around and I've already used some of these so that you might see some papers like cut up but I just wanted to show you more or less how this collection looks like, the beautiful papers that it has and so forth. So let me show you the first paper. Look how beautiful this is. The roses are just gorgeous and there's like foil on them which is beautiful the silver foil the back of this paper looks like this yeah oh no sorry the back of this paper looks like a striped lines and they're kind of distressed so it's really nice and here are some the next page which is has feathers the nice thing is that they always show you how the back looks like so you know what's behind it so this one also has kind of foil writing and they look like feathers and then there's the back of it which is this one how beautiful is that with little birds so it's a very shabby chic kind of collection very beautiful very soft amazing for beach layouts for you know soft layouts pastel layouts so it's really nice they have this sheet that has like notes note cards and things like that you can cut up you can use in an album mini album or you can use it for project life or basically anything for journaling so it's really nice and the back of this is a beautiful pattern like a dark pattern as you can see here is a piece of paper that i used because i was creating a mini album with this the next page is beautiful this is one of my favorites it has like roses and birds and they're all foiled in silver and the back of this paper is plain like has a geometrical pattern so it's really nice as well and then we have hold on oh this one how cool is this so there's a lot of sentiments you can use for your layouts for as i said project life or for basically any journaling any planner this is perfect for planners so I mean it's really really fun and then behind that there is a really nice map texture it's hard to see because the it's a 12 by 12 and the last page I think is my favorite both front and back look at the beautiful foiled images with the birds and the roses and the back is my favorite it's this one and I'm debating I think I might use this one for the layout that I'm creating so let's see what happens so in terms of okay so these are all the papers and now I'm going to show you the embellishments so it, I don't have all the embellishments I bought these I didn't I bought these like beforehand so I haven't gotten anything from Prima yet so this was all of what I bought myself they have beautiful stickers I haven't used these look how beautiful they are like you can really use these for planner or for basically anything the butterflies are gorgeous so and all the collections come with satin crystals and because these are where my favorite colors i had to get a bunch of these these were amazing now from the chipboard i bought the chipboard i mean i have used it some of it so that's another thing but it comes with the sheets of chipboard i love using chipboard especially the ones with the wordings because you can really find something that you can use to add titles to your scrapbook layouts or to cards and sentiments are always perfect and then the flowers and this year i'm really impressed with what prima did with the flowers besides having the most gorgeous flowers they also added things inside like little frames these are uh, paper frames this one even has a little stencil inside so you can use for something so that's really great and there is a paper frame and all the other ones also have paper frames different sizes so that's really great even some of them have chipboard. I've used some of these flowers, but look at this beautiful chipboard that you can embellish your layouts or anything with it. Here's another one that has frames. And these are not all the flowers that exist, just some of the ones that I picked to buy. And look at this one, and it comes with beautiful vellum butterflies as well. So I love this pack as well. So I'm kind of excited to kind of create something with these. So let's get started. 
One of the things that I wanted to show you is basically the whole process of how I do layouts. Since I haven't done them in a long time, I kind of want to go step by step through them. And I picked my favorite paper, which is this one, but it's a very busy paper. So I want to show you a trick on what to do when it's a very busy paper and you only want some elements from it. Now I'm doing this all live. Sorry, not live, but basically I'm doing this all recorded in real time because I really don't have time to go back and edit and do all these things. So I prefer doing it this way. I know it's a little bit of a longer video, but you can always fast forward or there's a button right underneath the YouTube video where there's a little cog settings and there you can actually make my the video go faster. And that way I, you will hear me talking faster, but you can still basically get the gist of what I'm saying. So if you want to do that, you can do it as well. I took some white gesso. This is the Prima Finnebeer Art Basics White Heavy Gesso. And what I like about the heaviness of it is that you only need to put one coat in order to get some coverage. And what I'm going to use is a little spatula, uh, not a spatula, sorry, a palette knife. You can also use the these ones, the silicone brushes but the reason why I wanted a metal palette knife is because I really wanted it to look rough and the silicone brush gives it a very smooth uh, texture and I want it to look kind of rough so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically cover the edges I want to center my picture around here but these kind of things are I don't want in it so much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically cover some of these so they are not shown and that way I keep what I want so for example the edges have these extra circles that right now I don't want to show in my picture but you see how it becomes really texturized when you when I'm using it with the palette knife so here I'm not going to be covering it all I'm going to be covering just a part of it and that way I get to cover only what I want. So some parts will be covered and some parts will not. So the ones that don't fit or that I don't think fit my layout will be covered. For example, this one right here. I like this, this one here, but I think this is too dark and I have the three here. I can kind of cover the darker ones if I want to and have a little bit of a lighter color coming down. So I don't need to like cover it all, but I like covering some of it and that gives me a really cool effect. So as you can see, I have some of them kind of peeking through and some of them are hiding behind the gesso. Some of them won't be seen because I'll be covering it, but this is basically it. There's not much to it. And then all I do is just dry it up. Okay. As I was drying, I was kind of turning the paper around and this happens to me sometimes where I realize that I like it with a very, I like it when I turn it and it looks better that way. I like it going horizontally. I'm imagining it a different way, even though the map is writing is kind of going this way. I don't mind that it's going to turn the page sideways. And I just like the movement of the gesso in this direction. So, and I really like how this was framed. So the reason why I actually cover the edges is because I really wanted to center my layout, to center the picture. So I knew that that would happen. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add more texture. This is a brick stencil. It's from Prima as well, but any brick stencil would work. And I'm going to use some paper texture paste to create really nice texture in the background. This is a really nicely textured paste. It has, it's kind of like, feels like paper inside. And for this one, I am going to use my palette, my silicone brush because it's just smoother to do it over a stencil. Now make sure you wash this really well because um, the grittiness of the texture will get in between the stencil. Now, because I'm focusing kind of in the center, I'm going to create a little bit of texture going down the page. So I will move the stencil around as soon as, as soon as I reach the bottom, but I'm making it thinner at the top. And as I'm going downwards, it's gonna get longer and thicker. 
and this is not thick enough I'm actually gonna move the stencil to the side in a second so for example you can't really tell but it's there I'm going to now move the stencil over here so it's gonna be the widest in the center that kind of gives it some kind of balance to the page for the composition but it also helps with um, centering everything towards the center of the page which is where I'm aiming for as I get down to the bottom of the page and I don't care if I put the stencil on top of this if you don't like that wash your stencil and do it again but I don't really care because it just gives it more texture but as I get to the bottom of the page I'm going to be doing thinner again and as I'm getting to the center of the page again it goes thicker what I love about doing layouts like this, which I call mixed media layout, is that you can actually create really cool texture that can go all across the page. And my favorite part is just adding so many layers of texture that it really looks nice. So it's really important to add that texture to a mixed media layout. Now, if you're not doing mixed media, then it's totally different but this is really nice and any leftover that i have i might just add here it doesn't really matter i can always add it later as well or just clean it off and put it back in the pot so it just looks really nice to have a little bit of texture this is a really nice stencil it's an old one so i don't know if it still exists i will check definitely just make sure that i put all the links below in the description area for everything if not i'll find something that is matching for this but as you can see it creates this really nice brick texture in the background right? and i really love how it looks i'm going to dry this up and then add the next layer at this point in my layout i usually add color and i am going to add a little bit now but you can also add at the end after you put all the embellishments the good thing with color is that it can go in between the crevices of the texture and really show that beautiful texture that you have in the background now you don't have to add color if you don't want to and i add very little color usually i'm actually only going only going to add the color this aqua color that is in the background and i picked a couple of watercolors you can also use sprays if you want to this, this is the art philosophy and it's um two different packagings now it's called art Philo it's called art philosophy from prima these are the new ones they are metallic pastel accents and before they used to be called metallic accents so this is the first one and this is the second one and i'm going to list both of them below and you can pick the colors that you want and that fit your your layout and everything else and you can also use sprays if you want to as well that are in this color you see i really want to use that these colors but i wasn't sure which one would match perfectly so i grabbed both of them i'll show you the second one as well it's a little bit more pastel looking it's more light so there it is and i'm going to test them both and see which one works better for me i also have a watercolor paintbrush and i'm going to show you how to use this i'm going to add a little bit of water to the ones that i'm thinking to use and if you of course if you don't like it the nice thing about watercolor is that you can wipe it off if you if you don't like how it turns out so i always start in the center because that's where it's going to get covered so even if it shows and you don't like it you're fine because it's not going to show underneath the picture that i put on because my picture is kind of going in the middle you also want to have a little bit of water so you can spray and another option if you don't want this to stain your page too much you can always cover the whole page with clear gesso i don't always do that but it's a good way of protecting your page if you want to clear gesso will just protect your page and you will not see uh, anything behind i don't really mind about that so that's why i just go on and add it directly to the page now i think these are very similar they might even be the same color and what I want is I want to kind of spread the color around. So what it does is that it starts showing in between the embellishments. Now I'm focusing only wherever the brick texture is. I'm also going to try this darker color to see how it looks. Maybe it's a little bit too dark, so I'm not sure if I want it. Now you could, as I said, spray or add this as well. And if you don't like it, for example, this darker color, I'm not too crazy about, you just grab a wipe and wipe it off. 
and then start again so you can just add more color now another option you can do is spray the background first and then add the colors that you want and they will just spread usually that works really well when it's on a art journal so I think I'm really liking this one more so I'm going to use it to just finish adding the color here now you don't have to add color as I said but it just looks really nice when you do and the nice thing about these metallic ones is that they are they have like a metallic tinge to them they're beautiful they really shine so either one even whether you use this one or you use this one it's very they're very very similar and they have that metallic tinge that looks beautiful okay so I'm not adding a lot right now and then most of it is going to get covered but I just want some of it and then I'm going to diffuse everything and have it like move across the page now I'm going to I'm going to dry this up because everything needs to be dried to add the next layer now you can always add more color once it's dry and you see it's not enough you can always add more now that I've dried everything I want to add a little bit more color so that always happens where you're not sure how the color is going to be when it dries up so to add more color all you have to do is just go on top of it with the same wet brush and that really helps to kind of add a second layer because sometimes the first layer kind of gets absorbed into the page and as I said if you don't want that to happen I'm just being lazy and I could have added the white the clear gesso underneath but I didn't so I just add a second layer and that really helps to promote color so this is basically what I'm doing I'm just wetting the color and this is my favorite color I love aqua if you notice I always tend to go towards these colors and it just makes it all so much nicer now as you see I am focusing on this kind of diamond shape while everything else is white in the background and that will come to play when I'm actually arranging the composition with the flowers you will see how that works out in at the end so I'm going to dry this layer as well and then I'm going to start embellishing so now that it's dry I am going to embellish and also add the photo I wanted to do a beach themed layout so I picked this picture of my daughter at the beach I thought this is an old picture but I thought that the colors matched perfectly and I love matching these colors I'm a very monochromatic scrapbooker and I like how all of the patterns are kind of peeking in everywhere but it's not it's subtle it's not very strong and that's what I was going for I'm going to use one of the frames to frame this picture so I'm going to get this out from underneath from inside these packaging and this is perfect yeah I love it and I want to distress this frame a little bit it's too perfect so I thought I could distress it by using my distressing tool and just you want to kind of make it look a little bit more rough at least the edges I think it will look cooler and more like beach themed you don't have to do this this is kind of my choice because it's too perfect and I want it to be a bit more distressed you can also distress in the inside so you see it kind of gives it a rough look and any powder that goes on I can either keep it there so it will give more texture or you can always shake it off in the garbage so you can use any distressing tool anything would work I just really think it will look really cool when it's distressed and if it rips a little bit that's okay that's part of it you want it to look 
as distressed as possible and as I guess I said you don't have to do that if you don't want and I check it like look if it's distressed enough yeah this is a little bit better so yeah I really like it more distressed now I'm going to kind of embellish so I it's not fully centered I am going to now embellish things but what I want to do is this is what I usually do is that I glue the picture and I'm going to use foam tape for that because I want to raise the picture a little bit it is really important to raise it because you want to be able to tuck in flowers now you don't have to do this part you can leave it flat but I love raising it oops maybe too much maybe I'll put two of these so one on this side and one on the other side this really helps to kind of make those 3d layouts and then you can always if you really love the photo you could put it in some kind of frame like a shadow box frame or you can definitely just put it in a thick album one of those d-ring albums they fit perfectly people always ask me but they do fit perfectly so I want to just fluff these flowers now another trick for for using prima flowers they become flat as they're packaged but you can always fluff them up and they look really good that way I need more flowers what do you know okay let's see let's pick some more let's see let's see let's see put some I love the butterfly they come with these beautiful butterflies in this package so I love that we'll see that looks really nice let's see if there's any chipboard I can use and some more flowers so I want some pattern flowers here we go so fine let's start with chipboard first I find this helps so we'll find a title through the chipboard but I think these flowers that kind of like kind of hang here towards the bottom yeah I like that okay and this one so I'm trying to continue on with the movement that I like going in this direction okay let's see and I play around with things until I'm happy with how things look no. let's get some gray ones here these are really nice So what I do in order to center the flowers in order to make everything around the picture I put the thickest flowers the biggest flowers closer to the picture while the bigger ones while the smaller ones go towards go towards the edges so for example this looks really nice here so I don't want to cover the Photo. Mm -hmm. and sometimes what you can do is you can actually cut the flowers if you're gonna tuck them in and they're kind of hiding and they don't fit anywhere you can always cut them up okay there we go we kind of have an idea of this not actually sure about this butterfly but we'll hang on and see I want to get some smaller flowers going let's see there's these kinds and there's also this kind I love these ones okay let's see so what you want to do you want to get some to kind of float up so 
No, you can't even see that one as well. Maybe this one. Yeah. Okay, there we go. That's good. And there is that one. We can put one of these over here. Polka dotty ones. Yeah, that's good. And let's see the striped one. No, stripes doesn't go here. I think I'm just going to put these pink ones. And not pink ones, these blue ones. There we go. So that's basically the arrangement. And let's see, now I want something for here. Love this. That for sure. So what I do is I basically put everything and then I just glue everything afterwards. So I wonder if love this, love this. Oh, beautiful. I think beautiful would work. I mean, I can always grab titles from somewhere else, from the stickers. But I love when they're embellished like this. So let's see. Where could I put the beautiful sign? Yeah. So I need one more here. So you learn with time how to arrange flowers. That just kind of happens with time. And of course I love these. These look perfect, but I'm going to add these at the ends because there's just too much going on right now that I need to kind of figure things out. And I wonder if this butterfly would look better. Let's see. I want to fluff it up. Oh, these butterflies are gorgeous. Yeah, I think that one looks better. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to leave that one aside. And I just want to... No. So I think this is it for the layout so far. I'm going to glue everything the way it is, okay? So just bear with me until I glue everything, and then I'm going to show you what else I'm going to do. But I'm not going to show you my gluing process because it's just um, silly to show you how I glue. But I am going to use Fabri-Tac glue. To glue everything you could use gel medium you could you basically use anything you want so as you can see I glued all the flowers and I actually went like this and just kind of flattened everything up a little bit so it doesn't stick out as much and I can show you like sideways it's not so bad it's not so so thick and now I want to add a little bit of this sade and crystals all the collections come with these beautiful sade and crystal beads and I love these. I love these colors. So I had to get myself this, of course. And I'm going to add some of this to kind of embellish. The way it work, I do it is that I tend to put the, as I said, the bigger ones kind of closer to the, to the layout and then the smaller ones further away. I'm going to put some of these as well. And it really adds beautiful texture to the layout. I love it. And some here. So I'm kind of embellishing everywhere. And the little one over here. So it just adds a little bit more ex like extra texture to the background, which is beautiful as well. Now, as I said, I was going to add a little bit more color in the areas where I might have missed. So here, for example, I need a little bit more color because I ended up not centering it. I ended up putting the picture a little bit more to the side. So that helps. that helps uh, to add color afterwards if you're missing it anywhere. 
no, I don't. Some, and if you don't like the where they go, if you don't like where the beads go, then you can just move them around. Now, I'm just looking to make sure that I like how it looks. And then I stop. So now I'm going to take back these metallic accents and just add a little bit more color in those areas where it missed. It's a great way of correcting things as well if you don't know where things are going to land. So just a little bit or if you want to add extra color to things then this is the perfect way to do it. So I find it in between the embellishments And the last little touch that I want to do is I want to take the paper texture again. And this I love doing with different textures or even with white gesso, but I really want to grab the paper texture today. And using a paintbrush, usually it's best if it's like a hard paintbrush, maybe one of the old paintbrushes. You can use a spatula as well or a palette knife. I'm going to add white highlights to the flowers. This kind of tends to blend everything in and match everything to the background. It's a subtle look, but it really makes a huge difference. So you can add as little as you want, much as you want. You don't want to cover the whole flower, but you do want to add texture. And you can do this as well to the frame if you want it to look more distressed. I love these frames that come with these flowers. Amazing, amazing. I love it. So this is it. This is basically my layout. And of course I could add more texture if I want in different places. That's up to me. You could just go in like this, you like add a bit more texture. You can still see some of the brick in the background, but although most of it is hidden, you can really see some of the texture that I've added in different places. So that's why I just find that layers help. Layers upon layers help a lot. And you can just basically build up. And you don't have to add all the layers if you don't want to. This is why you can choose between what you're wanting to add and playing around with the layout. So this is it. I'm really happy of how it turned out. I do need to add some heavy things in the corners to just flatten it out because whenever you use mediums on a paper, it tends to warp the and curl the paper in the corners. So just so putting something heavy like the, a heavy gel or some glue or something would just make it flatten it out so you can put it in your albums or just put it in your album and it will just flatten out over time. I really love all the layers and embellishments and I hope you enjoyed and it inspired you. If it does inspire you, please uh, post something or share it with me. I would love to see what you created inspired by this layout. And if you liked our video, please give it a thumbs up. Share this video in social media. It's really important to share everything and promote our channel but also if you get inspired by this and I'd, we'd love to see what you create post it on our Facebook page or on Instagram tag us and then we'll know thank you so much for joining me today and have an amazing day bye